Yeah. Isn't that gross that like 99% of the country probably just like takes giant dumps with their phones in their hand? <laughs> wow. Matt, welcome. Here Hi. we go. Good morning. Hey, um, we're missing somebody here. God rest his soul. PJ is going Whoa. to see the... What? You can't say that. I always want every soul to rest. Like you don't have... Like your soul doesn't have to be all... Like your soul doesn't have to rest when you die. You can... You know, you can always rest. He didn't die. He's just. I hope. I hope his soul is at rest right now. Okay. He's excited. He's going to a foot football game, foosball game. Foosball, dude. He, I mean, it's a pretty nasty day out in Tampa, so I'm, mm. I'm assuming it's going to be a little bit of a wet one for him. But how what do you, do you guys like it, tonight? Do you like? Uh, how do you know it's wet and rainy in Tampa? Um, they're four hours away. You, weather.com, really. Yeah. Well, oh, cool. Yeah, you can type in stuff. Stephanie Abrams. <laughs> Stephanie, follow her on Twitter. Yeah, so yeah. filling in for PJ today um, is Steven Steranka. Uh, Hi, you Steve. just see his back. Can we see his back or no? Is nope. he completely just my voice? Uh, He's got what a if good I make voice. it pan over to me? Oh, there you can see the back of there's the confidential things on my computer though. So. Oh man, man, this is gonna be the last one for the week. Yes, week two yes, in the book. Week two in the books. Yeah. How do you feel about it? I feel great. Yeah. I was uh, I was thinking on the way in today. I just was so excited to come here and do the show this morning. You were like I, I actually, actually texted you. I didn't think that we were gonna do it because yeah. I was gonna go get like an early meal and uh, just. Uh, I like the element of surprise. Okay, you, you know? surprised me. I think you. Do you have good topics to talk about? I got nothing. Perfect. Yes, Perfect. but I'm excited to be here. Yeah, Stephen, you excited to be here? Very much so. Always. Have That's you guys ever? Early, uh, late. Have you ever ordered a uh, happy meal and got cocaine on the side? No, I have not. Have you ever? It's happened to me once. Are you no, actually I'm being kidding. serious? I, I, no, but seriously, in the Bronx. There's this night shift manager from McDonald's that's offering up cocaine if you buy a Happy Meal. No way. I swear to God. Not fake news because that's not real. Mm. So how, like, how crazy, does, right? How does that work? They, like, you just go to the drive-thru and you're like, hey, I'll do like a, a single, you know, I know how I know fries, how I know how drive throughs work. <laughs> and then he's like, when you say Coke, do you mean like Coca-Cola or like maybe... Uh, but even, but like even with a Happy because a Happy Meal, there's a kid in the car, obviously, right? So <laughs> it's... You don't... Oh. So... You have to get a you have to have a kid in the That's car to get true. a happy meal because I get true? happy meals all the time. Do you really? No, no, no. no. It has been a while since I've been through a uh, drive through. Do you give your kids McDonald's or any fast food? Absolutely not. Tell me mm. why. It's awful. What's awful about it? The great taste or? <laughs> No, all, all of the t- the terrible stuff that's in yeah, there. Yeah, it's processed, right? It's so processed. But it's so easy just to take them and run it through. It's like four bucks. Oh my gosh, you being serious? No, um, when it comes to fast food, we do Chipotle. Chipotle, but that's even worse. No, no, it's, not. it's like the slime green, the slime they have, the pink slime. No, it's all natural ingredients. Plus, it's McDonald's barbacoa. owns Chipotle. At least they used to. What? I, you're making uh, stuff up now. Yeah, the, no, that's no, 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 accurate. no, 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 one hundred percent accurate. PJ, look at McDon- that. Up. PJ. <laughs> Can we beam this four hours across the state? No, seriously, McDonald's for a long time. I think that's why their shit was going so far, going down. Uh, McDonald's was uh, the owner of Chipotle. And that's why I never went because I hey, was like, Siri, McDonald's is gross. Did McDonald's ever own Chipotle? They did. Um, I have to unlock it. Of course they did. Did like, they really? Get out, guys. Come on. So, well, you go to, for you. so you go to Chipotle thinking you're getting good food. Meanwhile, McDonald's, which you I don't won't think go they're to, putting is the in, owner. They're not putting, putting in their chicken nuggets. You ever notice that chicken nuggets look all not the anymore. same size? Like that little like boot looking yeah. thing? Yeah. I don't think uh, McDonald's owns Chipotle anymore anyhow. 2006, they divested. There you I go. I did not know that. See? Um, but what Chipotle um, says that they offer, which is all natural foods, um, no antibiotics, no hormones, you're getting the you're getting the good shit. Well, it's not. It's they not probably a, had that stigma because that's the stigma I always had at Chipotle. I was like, I'm not going to go to Chipotle because at the time th- I wasn't eating McDonald's. Well, everybody thinks that tacos are bad. Tacos aren't bad. Tacos are bad for you. They are not bad. Yeah. If tacos you don't put anything good. on top of the tacos, they're not bad well, for you. Like, so I just had lunch. I had an early lunch, um, and I had chips, the like corn tortillas. Um, with pico salsa and guacamole. What's wrong with that? Uh, I don't know. Nothing. I think if you have too much guacamole, it's not good. Says who? I don't know. Says the it's calories. A, it's, says well, it's, salt? A, it's, a, it's a fatty Sugar? fruit, um, but it's a good food. source of fat. There you go. There's good fats and bad fats. There you go. It's fruit. Ooh, that's a yeah. great segment. We should start mixing that in. Is it a fruit or is it a vegetable? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Steve? 
It's a super superfood. All superfoods are fruits, right? Terry Shivo or an yes. apple? Yes, it is. Anyway, so I thought that was kind of crazy. <laughs> Don't go there. Going to get get it vegetable, meal. somebody who's been... <laughs> no, I'm no, not going to do that. Oh, boy. But we're not holding Here it back today, are we? we you, put us under, you put us under comedy in podcasts. We're not under health anymore. So. Yeah, we're definitely on the comedy. <laughs> We are. We switched. It. Yeah, we switched. <laughs> I think the cocaine switched us. Um, so this this person selling or giving out cocaine, like yeah. a little packet or what? Just just sell and blow at the drive through. Is he selling it? Selling it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but he got busted. He got busted. So if like, but a, what a great deal! Like, what an inconspicuous deal! It's like, yeah, well, no cops. I guess go through McDonald's drive throughs too. So I don't know. Well, if they're in their cop cars, you're obviously not going to offer to them, right? But if they're not in their cop cars, they you're all, taking a serious chance. But all co- correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-mm. All cop cars unmarked are from a quote unquote American made correct manufacturer. So correct. if you see a Dodge Charger coming up, eh, they might not want it. Right? Is that, that accurate? I believe so. Wow, that's did you never some inside that? information. I did not know that. Yep. You ever yeah. got you ever gotten pulled over by Dodge, a Miata, Ford, no. yeah. American? You got to do American. Yeah, um, Jeep. Jeep. Um, they have to know they have some Grand Cherokees in Georgia. That's not true. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. What am I saying? Yeah. Well, I don't think there's Toyotas. No Lexus. I got pulled over by a guy in a Porsche the other day claiming to be a cop. I got pulled over by a Dodge Ram. That's American. Yeah. American. That's yeah. American. America. Yeah. Dodge Ram truck? That's American. Dodge Ram truck. When did you get pulled over? That was when I was 16 years old. Oh. When was the last time you were pulled over? Oh. Um, probably like 20. So... 20 years ago? Yeah, no, eight, nine years ago. Eight, nine years ago. You haven't been pulled over in eight or nine years? Yeah, I'm, I'm a safe driver now. Wow. I used to be. You? It's amazing. Not that. I, had a, I had a solid 12 to 16 months that. Uh, in jail? No. Oh. No. That uh, I got a ticket probably monthly. Oh, 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 what? yeah, once every two months. But they were like, they were speeding, stupid right? tickets. It's why, like, why are you going fast? It's not even so much speeding. It was the HOV lane tickets. <laughs> mm. So but like, I, I had that. to drive every day like an hour each way, forty-five minutes. Yep. So like, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna do forty-five in the middle lane. It's like I gotta get to work. So it's seven to nine a.m. So I always used to go at around eight, eight fifteen, and naturally. I'd forget. I'd start thinking about the day. Come around a corner. Whoop, whoop, HOV ticket. Do you know how much they charge for an HOV ticket these days? What's that? It's like two hundred fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. Is it so? It's worth it, right? Sometimes. Once a month. Once a month. Ten Not months. <laughs> I mean, if you're going and there's like traffic and you need to get to Miami, right? If you need to get there, it's uh, different. It's like different. I probably shouldn't have done that. But I was young. I was immature. I grew up. I evolved as a person. Do you go? What, how fast do you go? I like speed to limit? cruise at eighty, regardless. Ninety five. As far, what's the? Do you always go you like five over 80 and or seventy? No, I just do. I think I feel like eighty is a good number, All a good time. rate of speed for me <laughs> on a, on a, on, a, on, a, on some sort of interstate or parkway <laughs> or whatever you want to call so it. So you're going eighty? Yeah, that's my speed. I just yeah, eighty's good. That. Eighty's good. You said, you know why I pulled you over? Because I look good. Uh, no, uh, so that's that. <laughs> anyway, I've it's been probably three years since I've got. No, I lied again. I got a speeding ticket going to Key West last mm-hmm. September. So it's been a little over a year. Okay. Yeah. The, the last time. And the guy, the guy tried to, it was like two in the afternoon. I was with my buddy. We were going to my buddy's bachelor party down in Key West. Cop pulls up. We had just bought like two twenty four packs of Corona. Mm. And they were in the, right in the back seat there. But, you know, we hadn't drank all day. He's like, smells like beer in here. I go, no, there's like two twenty four packs though. But you can like count them. They're still 24. <laughs> like, let's not play that game. He's like, all right, fine, whatever. You're speeding. <laughs> <laughs> It was the most it, it was the most comical thing I've ever seen in my life. Is like leading questions are fun. Yeah. Leading. Anyway, leading. Enough of me. Tell yeah. me about you. How are you doing today on this I'm, lovely uh, Thursday? It's, it's weather getting got raining, you down? man. I'm. I, I think I have what's it called? Not SIDS. Um, seasonal defective disorder. Right. Where like you're kind of like, eh. like I get like where people are kind of like. You mentioned this last year too. You got it around the same time. This yeah. Is like I don't I like. I like the sun. I know, I know it's sunny outside of the clouds. It's always sunny above. I totally get it. I wasn't going to say that. Were you going to say that? No, it's what no. I tell the people when uh. I try to bullshit them. <laughs> but, um, but it's yeah, sunny somewhere. For like, for like a day and nice yeah. hardcore, hardcore rain is good. But like, Boom. I just want to go to the beach. Like, I want to just, uh, ugh, I don't like it. And this is the main reason, like, I moved from Virginia. I was just talking to one of my, my good buddies, Walnut, um, college friends. And <laughs> yeah. you? Walnut. And, um, he was, I was like, what's the weather like there? This is what happens when you go on. You're like, what's the weather like? Yeah. That's what you talk about. And um, he was like, it's 53, but it's supposed to be 80. And I was like, oh, my God, that's why I hated Virginia. Yeah. It really was because like you would wake up and it'd be like 40s or 50s. 
And then you put on like, you know, a long sleeve and jeans. Yeah. And then by like three o'clock, it's 80. And you're like, oh my God, that's it's a pain hot. in the ass. Especially when you were a kid too. Cause you're like, you don't want to be like the uncool kid that wore like jeans and a sweater to school. You're like, I'm not cold. Well, I only, <laughs> but here's a fun fact. I don't know if you guys knew this, but um, maybe that was just me. So I like shorts. Um, but like where I went to school up in Virginia, and most schools are like this private schools where after a certain date, so like come November 1st, you yep. can't wear shorts anymore. Like it's part of like the, 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 dress, the code? dress code, which sucks because sometimes like you'll have like 80 degree days. You're like, oh, I'm wearing these fucking navy blue slacks again. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. My God. It was like that here. No. Oh, Florida. you couldn't wear short. You don't. What? So we, we were on the quarters, quarter system, quarter one, two, three, yeah, yeah, four. We went to private school, though. A private school. Well, we'll that's get why. Of course. If yeah. you go to public school, they, we're talking about. they're we're just talking about like, did he show up? What are, yeah. <laughs> All right, can't pass them. do we have? Um, <laughs> quarter My. four and quarter one. So like the one leading into December and then the January on. Those two, you had to wear pants. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, I didn't live that way. My daughter's school. It was she cold out. You wore pants. That changed, but I I remember having. And it. you know what? You know what's crazy? I don't. I'm I'm older than than you guys. Um, kids now. My daughter can't do this, but most kids now can take their phone to school, and most kids can actually use their phone in class. Yes, like as calculators and stuff. No, that's unacceptable. No, you can't. It's unacceptable. Yeah. They've they like forced high school, us to get just G- ruined everything. Two eyes. No, no, no. I get that. I totally understand that. But when I, back in my day, um, if you were caught with a cell back, phone back in my or a pager, because you know, I had a pager and a cell phone at the same time. Whoa, dude. Cool. Yeah, because I needed people. I needed to call You needed back. to talk to people. Yeah. yeah. Um, beep, if you beep, had beep, any, if you had them one, four, three. on you at school, um, the automatic in-school um, suspension, suspension for three days. ISS. And if they found it like in your car, it was like um, in-school suspension for a day. Yeah. Oh, God. Awful, right? Yeah. They horrible. found the pu- phone in your car? Public school. If you left it out in the seat. Well, why would, or if you oh. left cigarettes out in the seat, too. Bam. In school. In school what suspension. if you were 18? You couldn't have them on school property. Smart. But it's a pu- like public Blanket school. rule. Public Blanket school. Rule. That's crazy. Well, that was a thing for us, too. Yeah, you couldn't, you know, couldn't, like, smoke cigarettes in school. Hey, Brianna. Can you shut that off? Oh, what oh, are we listening gosh. to? No, just... Have you heard it the whole time? I, I just don't, like... Yeah, it's been right here. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's why I've been off my game this morning. Might not no, be able to good. post this. Oh, oh man. Good. I think you're good. <laughs> Start <laughs> over. Um, no, welcome, everybody. Hey. Start over. Hey, so Columbus Day. First off, uh, we work in Columbus Day. <laughs> yes is the answer. What is well, that? Well, here at the Alternative Daily, no, we have kidding. unlimited vacation. Oh, my God. Really? How's that work? <laughs> Uh, so it means like I can just sign on and just you know sign the papers work. and then cool. that's it. Um, I want a job. No, you're all, you're you're not working on Monday, are you? No. Um, oh my. Yeah. Well, listen, I think it's good that we observe Columbus Day. Is it? I do. Don't you? Yeah. What's so special? Well, he, I mean, I guess essentially he was a pioneer. Don't you think he's a pioneer? Uh, I think he was more world. like a pillager. Yeah. He was a pillager. Okay. Well, you're lucky he pillaged. Why is that? Because I don't think we'd be here. Uh, we could be Bahamas. We could. could be in the mall. That would be cool. The mall, Maldives, Maldives, Maldives. Like Maldives. Maldives. We could be in the Maldives. That the would French be cool. Ones. Yeah. Like, what if, like, I always think about, like, what if my parents were, like, what if I, like, grew up in Tahiti? Mm. I don't know. That'd be amazing. I Yeah, mm. I don't think so. Oh, you guys I are, wouldn't be working I here. I don't like Tahiti. I wouldn't be working here. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't no. work for you if you were a Tahitian. So you think, you think, <laughs> so you guys Jeez, think Columbus was a bad Tahitian. guy? <laughs> because you're in Tahiti. You think Columbus was a bad guy? I didn't yes. know. Him. I didn't know him personally. Yeah, but well, you had a you had a very stern reaction to that comment. Here's it was something. Actually, right. a little taken back by it. <laughs> so here's something. You go by and, I, and I'm doing a blanket. You're not just saying you. Um, I know what you're saying. But we're taught like all these different things mm-hmm. in our history books. Like, oh, Christopher Columbus discovered America. Mm-hmm. Well, he actually didn't really discover America. He kind of accidentally founded the West. Ran into this place. Yeah. Um, but he actually didn't do some really good things to the native people that were there. And so we just look at it like he just came on like, oh, stick my foot down. Guess what? Right. You know what? In a couple hundred years, they're going to put the American flag here. That's yeah. not really how it worked. But that's how we were taught in school. 1492, Columbus sailed so the, the ocean, ocean blue. blue. Yeah. So I will, I will take the day off. Don't get too okay. strong. Right. You don't like what he stands for, but I'm, I'm going to take the I'm day gonna off. I'm going to observe anyway. Yeah, okay, totally. cool. Well. I don't Steve, really have much against about, the guy. What do you think about Columbus? Um, he happens to be an Italian, so I have a little bit of a bias towards him. I don't, I don't think it's what, what we think when we learn about him in grade school. 
You you do the research. He, he killed hundreds of. Wait, hold yeah, on a second. Though. Thousands of. Do you think when you learn about of, anybody in grade school, it's the full entire story, or no. is it Mc? What is it, McPherson? Or I don't. I'm calling him out now. Ooh, Jesus, McPherson sorry. tapes. Uh, Have you seen those? Pearson. And so and so, his buddy. I forget his buddy's name. Who are you name. talking about right now? Book publishers. So you're saying book oh, publishers right. aren't uh, telling the full like story? Houston <laughs> McMillan or whatever. <laughs> yeah, or exactly. Like that. Yeah. Exactly. Big sham. The they didn't thing. write uh, that. They don't write those. Standard and Poor's. They they, they publish them. McGraw Hill. That's what I was looking for. Um, you know, it's yes, they publish those books. We're f- we're all fed propaganda. Like as Americans, we're fed pop- fed fed propaganda, right? Exactly. And so same thing happens over in Russia. Same thing happens mm-hmm. over in China. So I think we're fed less propaganda. Do you think? Do you think like when you go through your social studies book, and I, it's crazy to now to think that like their books will include like Donald Trump as the United States president, which is crazy. Um, well, why is that crazy? Just in general, it's crazy to think no, that in 30 years we'll have the history that we're living now being taught. Um, no, or, I just, I, I really do think it's crazy that just, um, an, and I actually mean this from a non, um, like, controversial standpoint, sure. but like somebody who has no political background, who was just a businessman, became president. Like, I, all the stupid shit he says aside, I still think that's cool that, like, literally here is somebody who did not go through the typical rank and file. Right. I like that. Now, with that being said, well, you could say the same about Obama, right? Just no, but he around. was he was no he was he, he was, was a politician. Who went never to had Harvard. A job. He did the. Yeah, he was a lawyer, then you know, senator and stuff like that. No. Wait, you don't like the fact that a businessman became president? I love the fact that a businessman became president. Yeah, that's why it's unique. That's why everybody's like, this is weird. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying is like it's that's weird. why. But anyways, anyways. Um, but do they tra- to get, are they going to talk get about get you to go off on a tangent? Are they going to talk about drone strikes in the social studies book? I think so. Yeah. Are they going to talk about whether or not there were actually weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and then us going into the war after that because of that? No. It's going to be because they're not going to teach kids that. It's Why all not? Propaganda. How do you know that? I know that. I have the McGraw Hill book in my um in back of my car. He's the writer. Um, no, because <laughs> they don't do that. Because you have a chapter, and so which right, means you have like right, sixteen right. pages to talk about. All these different things. The New Deal and all these Honestly, things. I got to be honest with you. Wait, no. does this mean you're not, not honest? Typically, I don't. Okay. I don't give you the truth. Uh, no, but um, it seems like I think we're like entering uncharted territories in that I don't really know what, what going forward looks like. I think in the past, you're right. They're not going to talk about all that stuff. They're going to fluff it up. They're going to give you a high-level overview of what happened and what they want you to believe happened. And that'll be the end of it, and it'll be a universal history. But now with social media and everything and the ability with the Internet to get information in real time, I don't, I don't really know what they're going to do. They might have no choice but to talk about, yeah, drone killings. Drone killings are the new submarines. Well, I think also that— Whatever also, it is, I don't that, know. Well, in, in all fairness to schools around, um, that this is where like research papers and, um, and doing stuff like that— study groups comes in so it's like here's stuff we're learning in the text uh, but you want to do a research paper oh you want to do it on the drone killings from obama have at it because i want to learn more about it right, right, right. i want to learn about how right. you know george bush you know at weapons mass destruction were there any like go out there and do it right um mm. but I, I imagine it's probably so much easier to write a paper now than it was back when we were in the dude we, we used to cool. have to go to the library oh fuck i mean e e f e uh, encyclopedia <laughs> You had to call people to ask yeah. them things. Oh, hey, I need God. 30 minutes in this room. It's a quarter. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Um, Steve, you did that, right? No. Yes, he's like, I know. That. Did you guys ever buy like any of those like research papers? Like You could just like pay for them? Get the full finished product? Yeah. No, I didn't do that. I did get the clip. Were they, were cliff, notes. cliff notes. Yeah. All yeah. day. All day. $200 what? Selling oh, your review sheets. Interesting. Oh, review sheets. Oh, I, that's actually, wow. I don't think that's, you can get in trouble for that because you're just saying, you're just that's my study guide. That's hers, exactly, yeah. Excellent. Um, you know what's crazy, though? Back in the day, like, part of your room or part of any room that housed these encyclopedias was, like, you built the room around this encyclopedia. I know. Where are we going to put the encyclopedias? Do we want to put it against that wall? <laughs> Do we need to get a dresser? But then what about like next year? And they were year's? great. You looked at them, you're like, I, I feel smart. Yeah. <laughs> Let me open this thing up. Uh, it oh, had like the little... It Caribou. Had, like, it had oh, like the little a... notches where you could put your finger in. C, D. Anyway, um, cool. Now it's just Twitter. So, now just Twitter. Speaking now of just Twitter. Twitter um, and, and free speech. Um, and so free Cam speech, Newton, is great. Um, who is a football player... Cam Newton's a very good football player for the Carolina Panthers. So the Carolina Panthers. Formerly of Auburn, won a, won a national championship with Auburn football. Ruffled a few feathers yesterday. Oh, my. When he do? said, Stephen, you got it? 
No, you want me to say it? What did so he do? So basically, yeah, it was uh, I think there was no game yesterday. So it was during like a press conference. Um, a female reporter was asking him about um, different routes from receivers and stuff. Again, I'm talking way out. This female reporter obviously knows more than I do. She was she wasn't doing it post game or just an interview. It's an interview, like at a press asking conference about right? routes. Routes, and he giggled yeah, and said legit. something like, <laughs> "He's like, it's funny to me about a woman asking about routes." <laughs> And the internet flipped its shit last night because um, Cam Newton is now sexist because he thought it was funny that a female reporter was asking him a sports-related question. And wait, so, wait, what? Yeah. Yes. Quote, unquote, wait, wait, it's he was, funny to hear a female talk about routes. Like, it's funny. Well, honestly, yeah. that that's is funny. Quote, unquote. I've never heard a female talk about routes, but if you're a sports reporter well, they, and you're a woman, that's your job. Right. So, Like, my wife doesn't do it, and your wife doesn't like do it. like a little bit of a crazy comment to make it if does. you're Mr. Newton. Okay, so if... Newton. But here's the thing. Duh. Is... But it's still free speech, Duh. right? He can do whatever... He can say whatever he wants. And so now there's this uproar. He did, but look at all this backlash he's getting now, right? Totally, right? And so... Um, I, I actually, actually don't even know the backlash. Maybe you can tell I me spoke, a little bit. I actually had a little interaction with a, a New York Times reporter. So I like to do at night. Mix it up, a little bit of vodka and LaCroix, and say, who can I troll night or now from New York Times? Um, it's actually, you know, this guy that I really like on New York Times, so Pon Deb. And he had said something about, like, this is Pete Cam Newton. He didn't even apologize. And I was like, dude, it's free speech. It's like the same crazy conservatives that are saying, that telling the kneelers um, they need to apologize and do this for the crazy American flag. I don't condone that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, on the flip side, you're being a crazy, uh, you know, a, a person by saying this guy needs to apologize because he laughed at this type of thing. I don't like it. I don't like necessarily what he says, but you can't demand a, an apology from it. I mean, it's just, and his response was, what does free speech have to do with this? I was like, everything has to do with it. Um, so I mix it up with New York Times. Um, nice. Okay. But I just think it's... Certainly a left-leaning organization you'd, you'd agree with? or I don't read it. Like, it's so yeah. boring. I go to like, the front they have page. good reporting. Uh, yeah. 90% of the time. TMZ is better. Ooh. TMZ is much more, T- yeah. TMZ, TMZ is actually going to get... They're going to... They, they've definitely evolved past yep. entertainment and just around... Do you know what TMZ means, by the way? 30 mile zone. It's in 30 miles of, of LA, Hollywood. Of Ho- yeah. of Hollywood. Uh, but they've definitely evolved past it. It's actually, actually really cool. Good. They're pretty good rep- um, reporting outfit. But, anyways. It's really cool. I never, um, never knew that. And Harvey. Learned something new. Harvey Har- Hotel. Harvey Levin. Mm. Um, he actually did an interview with Trump after he was um, elected. And so he doesn't think they're fake news. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Anyways. Um, wow. I, I, I don't know. I just think that it's something that. Uh, would you call Cam Newton sexist for that? Would I call him sexist for that? I, I would say that his mind probably leans more towards a sexist uh, oh, oh opinion man. with a comment like that. That camera go out? Um, no, you're good. So, the light flickered. I, you know, listen, like you said, he has, over. he has free speech, but that's that's not a, that, that's one you keep to yourself. Sure. <laughs> but you can't demand an apology. Steve, what do you think? Sexist from Cam Newton or no? I would say so. Yeah. I mean, it, God, you, we're it, all snowflakes in here. Well, it's, well, one, when, it's one of those things you could have said this 20 years ago and there were a lot less women in the locker room just to the nature of journalism that. business. But that's <laughs> that's changing now. They're all in there. And I don't think there's a problem with that. But you can't say those things. OK, I mean, you go back to like the Trump locker room talk. Fair enough. And so right. The demanding question. of an apology thing, I have to say, we are in a culture of like PC times 10. I agree with that. And it's like, no, I'm not going to apologize. And everybody's going to demand for an apology or fire him, lose his job. Now, he's getting paid millions of dollars by an NFL team owner who's like, he said what? He said what? Okay, I'm sorry. We'll put out a statement, blah, 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 blah. I'm not firing him. He's my golden right. pony. And he, if he, he was CEO of fucking, excuse my language. Mm. We have to if put the explicit CEO, tag on like this that. episode put, now. Put the, it, you should put him on it all. It yeah. gives us street cred, by but, the way. But yeah, I feel cool. I feel cool. <laughs> Straight it's out whatever. of Juno Beach. Uh, but if he was like CEO of Nabisco or something, they'd be calling for his head. They'd be like, he's got to resign. They'd ruin his life. But why is he held to a different standard? Well, speaking that's, of that's Nabisco. A, speaking of Nabisco is actually Dan and Yogurt just dropped him breaking news um, from Chief from Sponsor. sponsor yeah. uh, sponsoring him. Dan and Yogurt. Yeah. Dan and yogurt. Okay. Which they held the CEO have, they have of Dan right. and Yogurt said that, he'd be gone. And which he shouldn't like. And, and that's. And I, sh- I shouldn't. I also, I'm sorry, but I shouldn't assume he's a, he's a male CEO. There but you the go. CEO. Very sexist of you. Thank you. But I called myself out, so. Yep. That's. Brianna, sexist of Cam Newton to say that? Yes. Yes. Um, but here's the problem. Should we be looking to these the gentlemen um, 
as moral compasses for us. Everybody keeps talking about like, well, the kids, the kids, the kids. These are guys that are literally banging their heads around every single day. They're doing something very primitive. It's almost like what, you know, you look at. This is the modern old, age of. Like Rome, right? Exactly. Which is like you're in the Colosseum. Right? Correct. And there's Beautiful place, by the way. And there's literally like sides of people that are painting their faces, dressing in certain colors. Mm -hmm. yep. And there's other people on the other side dressing in certain colors saying, I like this person because of that. When it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, but see, here's the problem. See, here, and here's where I fall on this. It's like, I understand that they, they're playing a pr primitive sport. They are shaping the minds. They are public figures. So they are held, unfortunately, if you want to be successful, you want to make $25 million a year, you want to play on Sundays, you're held to a different level. Sorry, pal. You don't like it? No problem. But that's, shouldn't we take society. on the personal responsibility with our kids and saying, hey, don't make him your But I'm saying compass. that's society, right? You're saying, how can he do this? But then again, he's saying this on one hand, and then I don't know if he has been partaking in this, but a, a lot of his player, friends, whatever, are also protesting something else over here publicly on stage. Mm -hmm. right. But then he turns around and says something about this woman. Sure. But then you're like, don't hold him to it. But it's okay if he does this. So he can shape the minds when he does things positive. But when he doesn't do things positive, it's like, we got to let it go. Well, so that was one of my things I was talking to the New York Times guy about. That was, was a really good point, folks. Yeah. I like it. Um, was if you are going to, from a journalist standpoint, if you're going to say, hey, let these people kneel because they, it's the free speech and they're standing up for something. Um, you know, and this guy says something stupid and you demand apology, you can't pick your narrative, right? It's either, are you for free speech or you're not? Yeah, yeah. it's a dickhead thing to say, but should you demand an apology from him? No, it's like, that's a dickhead thing to say. Let's just move on. That's the problem. We've gotten to we a point. We can't pick our narrative exactly. when it comes to free speech. And now we've gotten to a point where people uh, are, will, will publicly outcry Fire him. Remove him from his job. I'm sure whoever says that has said some dumb shit in their lives, and they should have been removed from their job, too. But they're not a, a, a public figure, so nobody gives a shit, I don't know, I, And I don't know if I agree with that, because whether you have these massive, whether you like the CEOs or not of these big companies, there is such a, a quote-unquote higher standard that I think is actually yeah. ridiculous that people are a whole too. Like, we we've all say, created this. We all say stupid shit. But we've created this. This is a product of what we've created with our political correctness and where we've gone. But here's my thing. You can't say anything anymore without being under a microscope what, if you're a, a public figure. Weren't. And so right now. Sad. And, and again, I always like to give the full transparency. I'm I am, glad I'm not popular. I am the token liberal here. <laughs> uh, but wasn't the, the big proponents of free speech liberal people in the 80s and 90s, people like Howard Stern going against the FCC so he could show mm. boobs and talk about all these different things and lesbians? Did and everything. Howard ever apologize? Was he ever asked to apologize for anything he's ever done? No, but what I'm saying is, no, here's my bigger point, is at what point did the tide turn where now liberal-minded people are so offended by all these things that are being said, right? I, if you're open-minded, you should be open-minded to everything, whether you agree with it or not. I, right. it, it's That's the part that strikes a chord with me with my fellow liberal friends. Yeah. And I am that liberal person. You know what? Like, I appreciate you saying that because I do notice there's a lot of liberal people that get a, a, a lot more fired up and upset about certain things that... It never used to be. It never that used to be way. like that. I'm like, well, just because you think that well, that is one way, when why gay do I have to think that were taboo, it's one way? When gay things were taboo and it's having gay no... people over your house, like most, you know, I'm broad brushing here, folks, but most like conservative people, like, oh, gay, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I remember my parents, super liberal people, had like gay people over at house. It's like, oh, cool, right? Yeah. And so like it was more open minded thinking, yeah. but now it's like we've created this like I know structure I know. of just things set in stone. Where now you're yeah. seeing the the some of the right people coming back and saying, hey, you know what? It's free speech it's free speech yeah so. yeah well i think you know before oh, man. twitter before facebook before social media i think social media while it gave us so many amazing things the Keep internet going. it also i think really hurt us and i think it, it it in the sense that everything's publicized now i mean you can't go down the street and do something without somebody catching you on video on their smartphone and posting it to millions of people with within Two minutes, a minute. Well, a lot of it has to do so with... So, like, you can't get away... But basically what I'm saying is people used to get away with a lot more stuff. You can't get away with it anymore, especially if you're in the public eye. And I think everybody... Huh? I think it's a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing that we're so up in everybody's business. I think people need to focus on their own lives and make their own lives the best that they can and stop worrying about what other people said and did. I don't think it's kind of, my I don't opinion, think it's black and white like yeah. that. Because, like, let's say somebody's over there just punched opinion. a lady in her head, right? And you have a video out. We should probably... Do you need to post it to the internet? Do you, do you need to get everybody riled up? You go to the cops. You say, see this video? This is what this person did. 
do your job. Okay. And then you move on. And then you go get I lunch. Then you go to Chipotle because they have apparently organic chicken and non grass fed things. You what? Show the cops. They don't handle oh, them. cops are going to, if you see somebody so, punching somebody. So, so you think the, the mat, see, this no. is the, this is the that, point. That's the reason why most of these things go public I, on social media. I, I, I do see that. Okay. I, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. The point of the story is it's not up to the people. <laughs> All right, it's up to the people that were hired to do their jobs, and those in this case would be the police officers. I, mean, I yep. agree. There should be some disclosure, but I think the transparency is good. No, because people see this, and then they see this headline that was obviously written by some wonderful publisher to try to get people to click, and they get enraged. Oh, my God. And then they go to Facebook, and they rant, and they give their opinions. Oh, my God. And then what did we, where did we get? What did we do? We wasted an hour out of the day. We could have done something productive. <laughs> That's distraction. That's all it is. It's a distraction. The statistics on the, if you own a company, folks, do a deep dive into your employees. They're going to be spending Ooh. half oh. of their day on Facebook. I'm sorry to tell you. Ugh, that's what they're <laughs> going to be doing. So. Ah, that's a good point. She gets paid to be on Facebook. No, no. You, that's good. Good job. Keep up. Keep up the good work. But I'm saying. Know, I think there's a level of, there's a level of escapism too, because, um, it's just what about mindless the, entertainment. What about the people that go smoke cigarettes mindless. like during the day, three or That's four times? That's even worse. It is. That's even worse. Um, mm. but I also think it's also the last a- job I worked. Um, that was a thing. That was a thing that was addressed because these people every hour, this is a good, this is a good question to ask every hour Jake from Juno beach asks Jake, I hate breaks no but um they would go out for 15 minutes an hour and smoke cigarettes 15 minutes that's every tw- hour 25 per- percent of an hour that they were working there so what is that smoke was going into their lungs so that's so two out of the eight hours they worked they were on break you're basically hiring a part-time employee <laughs> that's what you're doing you're hiring a part-time employee so it was a thing where it was like hey we're so-and-so i need this they're like oh they're on their break Wait a oh second. You, so do you think if you're working a desk job, not, not if you're a waitress or a waiter and on your feet all day and doing things. A nine to five. If you're cubicle working a job. cubicle job, should you get 15 minutes of break time per hour? Are you working that hard mentally that you need to take 15 minutes off an this hour? This is a good question, right? So oh. as it's an easy answer. No, no, really? thank you, Steve. <laughs> robbing you thank without you, a gun. Thank you, Steve. Robbing you without a gun. <laughs> you know what? I am rubbing off on these people, and it's just a <laughs> light fall. No, but seriously, I that good answer. The way he started but him and me, Han. Let me ask you. I'd this like question. you to expound upon sure, this. Sure, and I'm with you. I'm with. You. That's why we offer unlimited vacation. Look at the place we work. It's awesome, right? We mm. try to create a place where. Uh, a place of employment, a place to work where we never had, right? Ten fifteen, that unlimited vacation ends, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, what if if you you require people to sit at a desk for like two, three hours straight because you have to actually let them go? I think it's like I think it's a mandatory thirty no, no, minutes. You gotta go to the bathroom. You get up, you go to the bathroom. <laughs> Diapers. You can't um, say you have to sit here for two hours. That's not right. But are you saying in uh, service job? Uh, hold on a second. I'm just saying like regular like in cubicle about job. office job. No, those types of things aren't required. You have to you have to give them lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they have lunch. And you have to give them 30 minutes and you have to give them a 15 minute if it's an eight hour day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have to get, wait, hold on. Say, say, say what? You have to give them a 30 minute what? Lunch. Oh, lunch should be an hour. Right. But no, I think it's required 30. Yeah, but it should be an hour. Um, totally. It should be two hours. Um, no. But anyway, here's my point. Here's my point is um, what if you're more productive but in spurts? We've talked about this. Like, what if you're like, I'm 45 minutes on and then I'm 15, 20 minutes off, but now I'm 45 minutes on. Like, what if you're more productive? I don't think you can, I'm with you, but I don't, I don't think you can work in that job or that environment. I think you need to do Fair something enough. for yourself. I think you need to conform to the oh man, expectations. Really? <laughs> well, you have to conform. That's the problem that with society well, that these is days. True. You think like, you can do whatever we want. You go into, no. <laughs> because if you go into... <laughs> There's which, rules for a reason. If you go into a job that says you need to make 10 widgets and you have to be at your desk to make you know, at, you know every 40... You're going to have to conform to that. Now. I totally get but what you're now, saying there. But now, if... But if you if say you not, have to do this, right. and this person completed that yeah. in mm-hmm. six hours, yeah. they can take a break. But... You can't make a habit, in my opinion, of taking a 15-minute break. You're like, <laughs> put in 45. I need 15. Is this person? Let's go taking, smoke a cig. Is but, this person taking a 15-minute break every hour and then also every taking hour an hour and, and then a lunch? Here's actually the bigger problem. Of, no. Well, here's Thank the bigger you, problem of it all. And I, and I like what you Thank kind of said, oh, conform type of thing. Is These people obviously don't like their job. And, and the, the type of situation they're put in, the type of work they're be doing, they're just doing it just to get fucking paid, right? Right. And they're doing it for the benefit of doing it to get paid. And that's not a really good business model to create. 
create. You guys wait, 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 wait. Who created that business model? I don't know. So it's not a good business model to create. Yeah, no, no, I, I, don't, I, I, I agree with what I said. Yeah, I mean, I, for me personally, I want to create a place where people don't want to take. 15 minute smoke breaks every hour. I want to create a place where That's people understood. enjoy to be in there and they're working three hours, you know, at, at a time. Right. Saying, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to step outside for a little bit. Technically, they should work, work in like four hours at a time, then take an hour <laughs> break and then work another four hours and go home. But yeah, no, but I, you, I understand what you're saying. And because though. they're and, obviously not happy. And we're very lucky too because escapism. Because check this out from a business model standpoint, those people that are in that are, are more likely to clock out at 5 30 when they're illegally allowed Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And if you look at the two people that are looking at us now who love their jobs they're here to here till seven eight nine because they love what they do exactly and so that's why it's a better business model than just creating just cubicles and just here's what you got to do for that now with all that said the business model is the business model at each and every company and it's different if a company is not partaking in your business thoughts should the employees be allowed to do what they want and take 15 minute breaks well, I, if that's not the culture of the company. Well, here's the thing. It all depends on the contract that they signed. If you said you're, you have to. 40 it, hours a week. Well, here's the thing. It's, and it, I'm not even talking about their work-life balance now or whatever. If they sign the contract and they sign the offer letter that says um, 30 minutes of yeah. lunch and a 15-minute break, well, then it is, you know, the, the power is in the employer to say. Right. Yeah. And again, I would never work there. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I know. Um, I'm just, but the power is in the employer. So this brings up an interesting thing because um, I was talking um, – uh, I was tweeting about Anthony Scaramucci. He started something called the Scaramucci Post, which is kind of like this media company, which people are trying to figure out. And I actually said, Very I tweeted cool. that I, I liked what he was doing because he's the type of guy, he's talking with people. He was on Stephen Colbert, super leftist type of um, uh, TV show. And he went on Barstool Sports and talked to those guys. This guy is just trying to talk to people about, obviously he was the, the what was he, the communications director for 10 days. Yep. And he was a character of himself, but he's definitely reached out to both sides. You could say, you know, at the left and right and just trying to talk to people. And I like what he's doing. So I tweeted something like that. And then this guy got back to me and just like, you know, what is it? What is it exactly that he's doing? What is his mission statement? I was like, I don't know what his mission statement is. And like, well, you have to have one to have a business. Like, no, you don't. I was like, here's what it comes down to. The sole responsibility of a company is to its uh, stakeholders. You don't have to have, if it makes you feel good to have a mission statement, go for it. And sure, I'm fans of them. It's good sure. to have one, but you don't need to have a mission statement because the sole responsibility to the business, of the business is to the stakeholders. And that's, and right now, and this is why people, uh, uh, this is why a lot of people don't like capitalism because that's the bold and honest truth of it. Now, I'm going to pat ourselves on the back. You know, we create a place like this where you give nice benefits, you give everything you can, and you want to create a really good environment. But the bottom line of the day is it's to the stakeholders. And that's what people don't realize about businesses. Like, they're, they're not morally, ethically wrong or right. It's just the bottom line. And that's what you need to understand. So if you're signing that contract, if you're signing an offer letter that says, I get 15 minutes break and a 30-minute lunch break, and you really hate it, you know, you need to look at your situation. Be like, do I need to take this to get ahead, or should I just keep looking? Hey, we are both in agreement. What do you guys think? We are both in agreement. I think I think like Jake said, if if you're expected to work eight hours a day, you got to put in eight hours of work. It it depends on the company. It depends on the company. Totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're talking about like. I, I'm just asking a question. You know what I mean? It just it's just more of where do you you know where do you where do you fall, if you will, and. Um, you know, time to plank. Speaking of planking, um, I've got to think about pooping habits. Um, okay. You, um, okay. Pooping habits. And how, often, habit of pooping. how often do you move your bowels a day? Uh, frequently, probably more frequently than some might like. Really? Also known as my wife. <laughs> <laughs> does she do, this is a good question. Uh, do you guys, do, does she, do you go in front of each other? Or no. no. Okay, no. cool. No, I think once you do that, it's over. <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, honestly, right? Once you do that, once you start exchanging whiffs of what's coming <laughs> and going is no pun intended. Um, I think, I think things become different. I mean, we are certainly not ashamed of it. I think it's, sure. it's not, uh, it's part of life. It, 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 it's not something you can really hide. <laughs> um, so that is something that is disgusting to me, See, ah, but you do, but I do it and it's gross. And that's why I don't want to touch anybody else's phone, specifically the delivery guy, delivery dudes, they they have these cool things now. They put this chip in. You swipe your card. Bah, 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 bah. Then they go sign. 
And you're just like, ugh. And you can just <laughs> see like their side, like uh, oh, you sign oily. <laughs> and then you're touching, you're like, this guy spends a lot of time in the bathroom. <laughs> 10%, not 15. Do you sanitize yourself like with a white piece? I do. I do frequently. You do? Frequently, absolutely. But you have to nowadays with these new iPhones, it's all about your thumbprint. So, I mean, if you don't clean it, the thumbprint You're always work. using your finger regardless. Oh, you're saying it, that your thumbprint doesn't work because it gets so gunky? Sometimes, yeah. Ew. I know, right? Italian. You, you got to, I'm greasy. greasy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, man. Do you bring anyway, your phone into what's the bathroom? Your, no, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, I'm the host. I'll hold that. Pooping. <laughs> yep. Habits. Um, once or twice a day. You do it in front of your mother. And, and nope. What about your wife? Um, no, we still. It's it's happened, right? And it's like never comfortable. It's never like ah, oh, hey, how's it going? How was Door open. That's why. Uh, but now, especially with kids, like usually there could be just be like a little fucking two foot human being comes in there, and be like, hey, what's going on? You're like, that. Eh, well, that, <laughs> there goes that. That was nice. Peace and quiet. Um, yeah, it's um. Uh, regular. Ugly day. It's important to be regular. It's important yeah, to be regular. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Steve. Uh, clockwork. Good. I, uh, I I go every morning. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Do you and Have you tried the squatty potty? I make my own squatty potties. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. But you, I, I usually do that. Have yes. you tried it, Matt? Uh, I have not tried the squatty potty. Yeah. But what I do do is I get those encyclopedias. <laughs> I can't even say the word. Encyclopedia. And I stack them. No, you don't. No, I don't have encyclopedias. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never use the squatty I do body. bring my, my phone in and often my iPad. No. And you, sometimes no. my What computer. are you, living in there? Ew. That's disgusting. <laughs> I'm the type of person that... Did you bring a coffee maker in there, too? probably go to the bathroom <laughs> like, in like five minutes, but I'll be in there for 45. That's I how get, I roll. If I get lost do in you, a Facebook list. If you, I get lost on like the New York Post app, yeah. I'm, I'm there for 20 minutes. Do your, um, do your legs fall asleep? Your feet fall asleep? Oh, 100%. <laughs> then you got to start leaning to different sides. You're like, well, my left leg is yeah. asleep. Let's move to the right I'm like, side. I'm, I'm finished, but then I got to wait 10 minutes for the feeling to come back. Now, do you, no, no, that's not how that works. As if you, you stand in, up, it comes back as quicker. You walk in, <laughs> as you walk in, and do you tuck it under your arm like it's the newspaper? Oh, no. No. Oh, yeah, no. neither do I. Um, <laughs> do you bring your phone in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't that gross that like 99% of the country probably just like takes giant dumps with their phones <laughs> in their hand? <laughs> well, so, like, and there's just like fecal matter all over. No, it's not. <sighs> there's not. Because if you think about it, you walk in there with, let's just say your hands are clean, but they're probably not. So you're just regular hands, right? And then you're playing on it. You're doing your business. You put it down to wipe. You're yeah, not, yeah, yeah, you're no. not still I, in your hand. I think it's the and airborne then you, and thing. Then you, well, then it's all over your clothes. It too. is. Oh, it is? Yeah. yeah. It's So apparently, and I read this on a website, that you're not supposed to have um, clothes your on? toothbrush toothbrush within three to five feet of the toilet bowl because when you do flush it, fecal matter does come up into the, uh, what would we call this, the atmosphere? Maybe that's why everybody gets pink eye. That's how you get pink eye. I knew it. When you brush your eye? If you put what? Pee. Get out of here. She, she says if you put mm. pee in your eye, your pink eye goes. Who's going to test this for us? Didn't she also think like North Korea like started Hurricane Irma? Don't yeah. Sleep oh. Don't sleep on it, she says. Don't go. Don't you go sleeping on me. Checking off pooping habits Okie here. dokie. Hey. So, okay. All right. Um, yeah, so I, um, oh, Bidet. Do you have a bidet in your house? I don't have a bidet, but uh, in Europe, I like to use them quite frequently. They're so delightful. I don't like them. You don't like them. Why would you not like those? Do you like water that you just got off your butt? Huh? So my view has changed on this completely. When I lived in Miami. If it's midday, it's especially in Miami in 95 yeah. degree weather, you're going to need to either take a shower yeah. or use a bidet. I mean, come on. I was, especially if you're going out for five, out, six hours. But now, now I can't. Not shower after pooping. Correct. Right? And it would be just so much more convenient to have a bidet. I don't, though. I wish I did. Hmm. Maybe we should get Steve a bidet for uh, Christmas. They make ones that you can actually put on to the actual... And then you, like, splash it up. And then it's got just, like, a thing that pops it's out. Like, and like, ah. But, yeah, I'm with you. Shower, like, sh I love to shower right oh, after. Oh, yeah. You got to move it and shower it. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's why, That's why everybody out there, if you can, try to get on a morning schedule when you first wake up. Yep. That's the end of it. Get your day started off right, too. Wake Thinking up, roll clearly. out of bed, poop, shower, fall asleep, wake up. Right, because he day. sleeps in the shower. It's <laughs> the weirdest thing I've ever You ever pooped in, in the shower? Life. No. Okay, mm. that's going to do it for us. We're going to move. What? 
What guy yes. doesn't? Yeah, you have to pee in the shower. No, you go right there. You just aim for the drain. Yeah, aim for the There's drain. Like 10 holes. Or you don't even have to aim. It's the greatest thing. You'd be like, mm. ah. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on if you drank a lot the night before. You're not well hydrated. Then you just see like like a bronzy type of not, pee. Do you, and you I'm not like, drink oh a lot of water? God. Do you not drink a lot of water before? You know, that? sometimes I, um, I end up drinking more more coffee than water or more After a beer night drinking. than water. I, I probably should drink a lot more water, which I would love to have like a constant IV. That that is something. I know they're doing it in Vegas for people. They have the bus that drives around. When you drink too much, you can get an IV. But they should make it more available to to, to folks to actually do IVs because they're just delightful. I mean, the way you feel after getting a bag full of IV in you. Well, the problem is, is like, who like, do you who do you trust to give you an IV, right? Because about yourself. like nutrients yeah. and. Yeah. I mean, they have that obviously for um, for people like diabetics who give themselves insulin shots and stuff like that. And then you have people, some people who actually need pumps and different. My things. buddy's got one that he's got right on his hip. But mm-hmm. just to, just, just for like an immune immune boost. That's like literally, have literally if you had a, an IV every day, you would be like incredibly healthy, vibrant, just hydrated. What, why don't you or just drink it? Well, you could drink it. It doesn't retain it the same way. It doesn't? Not for me, especially in Florida in the summertime. <laughs> Sweat just going, going going out to the car. There is a place around our office that does this. Yeah. Like and hangover that. IVs? Yes. I'm telling you, this is a thing. I know. In have five years, you you're going to look back on this podcast and you say the guy had something. Have you tried it? He slept on it, though. Have you tried it? Have I tried an IV? For, like after a hangover? No. The only I, would l- I don't want to do it because I hate hangovers. Um but I'd be interested. Would There's other methods to get rid of hangovers that are more natural. Really? Oh, yeah. Like what? I don't know. No. I read mm-hmm. that in the book somewhere. Are oh, you talking about marijuana? I'm talking about marijuana. Does it really help? Uh, it is. Or the... are you just high and hungover now? Nope. Oh. Nope. It is the, the best medicine you could possibly utilize for a hangover. And gr- certainly grab a cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> I read that in the book. Yep, it have works. You, have you tried And that? I have wrote it down that? and then I laughed about tried it that? later. Have you tried that? Have I tried what? Try to cure hangover with marijuana. Yes, absolutely. And it does work? Every time, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? Yep. Is it instant? Or Probably it like 12,000 for 12,000 on this, but <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10 times it'll work for you at home, folks. Is it, is it something like, how is it instant or is it like... Immediate. Is it really? Immediate. Immediate. Yeah. And nausea, gone. Oh, man. You're, like, you're talking about like really turning it up when you're nauseous the next day. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay. Heartburn, gone. No, no, doesn't cure, <laughs> doesn't cure heartburn. Doesn't cure heartburn. What about anxiety? Because I get a lot of anxiety if I'm hungover. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that... Uh, I don't have anxiety, fortunately. Um, so I don't know how somebody would react to it. I, I, I do know people utilize uh, marijuana to cure anxiety, but I also think that, that it, it becomes a little bit more scientific at that point. You can't just smoke any marijuana or take... That's probably the number marijuana. one reason... THC, I, whatever. I stopped drinking so heavily was uh, the anxiety that I would get. You'd get anxiety oh. the next day? Next day of like, oh my God, like what's going on with the business? Did I do the right thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And like, yeah. all these, like are my kids going to live? And it's like, wait, what are is my going? kids yeah, going to yeah, live? Yeah, totally. Wow. Crazy stuff. I just... Oh. And it's... I just have a... Not to say I can... Well, don't control. you meditate? Doesn't the meditation calm, calm oh, your anxiety down? Oh, yeah, totally. Down? It helped, but... Hmm. Meditating like while hungover is you, the, the answer is just don't get hungover. <laughs> okay, so just don't drink. No, it's not that you don't drink. It's or just don't get a lot of hungover. marijuana the next day. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's gonna do us. This was this was actually not supposed to happen today, and it happened. That's it. That's it. Really? Yeah, we, we it's been fifty minutes or Jeez, forty. Wow. We were formal, but we were here to party. Good. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up because uh, I need to get some lunch. Oh, man, that's, that's a little late, huh? Nom, nom. Better late than never, you know how they say. I know. Steve, what's going on with you? Um, not too much. Yeah, can we find you anywhere? Uh, sure, you can find me on Instagram. Yeah, where are, where are you at? At Steve Starenka. Oh. Yeah, follow me. I'm going to start blowing that thing up soon. S-T-E-V-E-S-T-E-R-A-N-K-A. Hey. Yep, the way Starenka sounds. That's the way it's spelled. Um, and uh, anything before the weekend? No, I just want everybody to have an incredibly safe and happy Columbus Day. Um, Not the Native be, Americans. I will. <laughs> I will be uh, thankfully celebrating thousands of them. Thousands. You're welcome. You know that Columbus never even landed in America, right? I don't really see why you guys are giving me shit. <laughs> Monday's Columbus Day. Fucking have a good time. Party it up. You live here because of him. One way or another. <laughs> One way or another. Oh, man. 
He, he was pioneered for gold. They didn't even have I gold. That's think, why I murdered them all. I think you guys are jealous that you didn't pioneer. <laughs> I think you guys wish you would have founded America. He, he didn't find America. What if Monday was the Jake Carney holiday? Who Jake was the one Carney that actually Day. discovered, like, land, was it Ponce de Leon? It, yeah, exactly. Right on, um, you know, the Fountain of Youth over there in uh, St. Petersburg. Loose term. There were no, people not St. Petersburg. Here. Excuse me. From, who discovered it from the east. Where is that? It's, it's yeah, just south of Jacksonville. Here. What is it called? It's not St. Petersburg. St. Augustine. Augustine. Shame on me. Shame on me. I know that they were already here. I, I'm with you 100% on that. That's why the Cleveland Indians, Who, the Indians? need to change their yeah. mascot. Well, that's why they don't have to pay any taxes. Mm. Oh, yes, you are. I'm digging a hole? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle that one next week. All right, okay? let's wrap let me, it up, Let me guys. make a note here. Let's see. Um, Political correctness. Native again. American <laughs> taxes. There we go. That's going to do us for us Thursday, this Thursday before we uh, really. I'm going to ask him because uh, Saturday I'm going to the uh, Coconut Creek Casino, the Seminole, and I'm seeing Artie Lang doing stand up Saturday night. For everybody. No, I'll let Thank you know. guys very much. I'll ask them if they're going to celebrate. If they're going to celebrate. Good weekend. Monday. You can find me at Jake Carney on Twitter and Jake Carney on Instagram. We'll see you later. <laughs>